students welcome to nsc biology this is neelavathi your biology lecturer i know you have all studied class 12 chapter that is sexual reproduction in flowering plants i know what are all the concept present in that and you are all aware about it so that is microsporogenesis megasporogenesis double fertilization everything you are very well known but the question is all this concept suppose if i summarized and if i explain everything within few minute in one page through diagram it would be so easy right so that is what i'm going to to uh, do today now the life cycle of angiosperm here we'll understand how pollen grain is going to form where the mitosis occur where the meiosis occur and how exactly the male gamete is going to form from the male part so like that from the female part that is the pistil how a egg is going to form where exactly meiosis occur where exactly mitosis occur and finally these product how is the how they are going to fuse and finally how they are going to form a seed and from the seed as we know once again the new plant is going to germinate so that is what nothing but a life cycle that we are going to study in this small video okay that is life cycle of angiosperm and one thing i want to make you understand that many student they got confusion that whether a flowering plant is a sporophyte or a gametophyte they don't know the basic difference but actually dear student remember one thing whichever the part if it is give rise to a microspore or a megaspore definitely we consider such a plant as the sporophytic plant okay so here the angiosperm is also a sporophyte because the angiosperm that is a flower of a angiosperm the microspore is going to form from the stamen that is from the anther so in the same way from the pistil megaspore is going to form so obviously it is a spore producing structure therefore we can consider it as a sporophyte right so if i draw a diagram of a flower i can write it as a sporophyte so from that sporophyte we could able to form gametophyte so how these gametophyte finally give rise to a gamete and how they are going to fuse and finally form the product that is what the thing that we are going to study now okay let me draw a structure of a flower first okay yes this is a part of a typical flower we can give it as a sporophyte name okay so here you can see the sepals the green part as well as the pedicel thalamus everything and here corolla is also there there is nothing but the petals and inside in the blue color i have shown the stamen part as well as in the pink color i have shown the pistil part that is a female reproductive structure stamen is a male reproductive structure now let me take out one stamen okay let me take out one stamen first Yes, we all know the stamen consists two part. One is anther, and another one is filament. Now, if you take a only anther part, and if you just cut it, the transfer section, we could able to see something like this. so this is ts of anther so inside this anther there are so many pollen sac are present these are the pollen sac now i am just taking out one pollen sac and inside the pollen sac there are so many cells are there they are called pollen mother cell okay so these are pollen mother cell okay let me color it in blue color only so that you can able to distinguish exactly now if i just take out one pollen mother cell or microspore mother cell pmc r m m c m m c means microspore mother cell pmc means pollen mother cell so this will undergo meiosis because it is a 2n in number you should know it it is 2n in number it is a diploid okay now when it undergo meiosis it give rise to four cells right so all these cells are n in number because it is a half the chromosome number of that of the diploid so therefore all these microspore are haploid so these are microspore 
So finally, this microspore undergo mitosis and start converting into pollen grain. So why I am telling the mitosis occur? This is because inside the pollen grain, we all know there is one large cell. It is called vegetative cell. V means vegetative cell. Okay. So there is one more cell. It is called generative cell. GC means generative cell. So this generative cell finally get converted into pole. Uh, that is a main gamete. Okay. So let me show that structure also because here also mitosis occur because it is an equational division. So here it show mitosis. See here also mitosis. Here also mitosis. Whereas here meiosis. Okay. And these two things what you are saying. These are the sperms. Sperm in the sense here male gamete. So we got finally the male gametes. That is from the main side. That is from the stamen side. Now in the same way we need to form the female gamete. That is the egg from the pistil part also. Let me enlarge those pistil part as well as the ovule structure and finally let's see how it, there is an egg is going to form. Yes, see here, I have enlarged only the pistil part. It consists, this is the stigma and this is the style and this is the ovary. I have just given only one letter because I don't have enough space here so that uh, I could write the entire name or else I, I am unable to show the entire life cycle within one page. You will get confused if I just move on to the next page. That's why. Okay. Now, let me enlarge only the ovary part. Okay. So, let's imagine this is the ovary part. So, within the ovary, we could able to see there is an ovule. Okay. There is an ovule. Now, the ovule is surrounded by many integuments. Integuments. Okay, so let me take one more color to show the integuments. Now in the ovary, the ovule which is so present, okay, so inside this ovule there are so many tissues are there, I mean so many cells are there. These cells are nothing but megaspore mother cell, M, M, C. There it is microspore mother cell. Here it is megaspore mother cell. Here, okay, let me show the integuments with the same color so that you could able to understand. Here one of the cell which is quite different in nature, it is considered as megaspore mother cell because it will undergo the process of meiosis. Okay, let me take that cell in different color. Okay, let's imagine this is one megaspore mother cell. Now this megaspore mother cell undergo meiosis. Right? So, it start producing 4 megaspores. So, out of these 4 megaspores, all are n in number only. All are n in number. So, in that, 3 degenerate, only 1 left. So, all these 3 degenerate, okay? So, only 1 left. So, it will be considered as mega, I mean functional megaspore. Okay. So, from this functional megaspore, mitosis occur and finally it produces embryo sac. So, this is the structure of embryo sac. Okay. So, inside this embryo sac, there is an egg. So, this is the female gamete. Now, let me show how exactly inside a uh, ovary or inside a pistil this embryo sac looks and how the process of fertilization takes place. From here itself, I will take the continuation. Now, let's assume this pollen grain, this is the structure of pollen grain. So, this is the structure of embryo sac. So, this is female gametophyte, embryo sac, pollen grain is male gametophyte. When this pollen grain land on the stigma part, let's assume it lands on the stigma part, it consists what? Two male gamete. So, it consists of two male gamete 
and this is a generative cell. And here there is a pollen tube formation occur. Pollen tube formation occur and through this pollen tube these male gametes move inside the embryo cell. And finally it fuses with the egg and start forming a zygote. So the zygote is 2n in number because all the cell here this Young is n in number and even the sperms are n in number. Everything is n. So when these n combine together, it form a diploid. That is nothing but a zygote. It is a 2n. So here, this is the product of fertilization. And here you can see the zygote. And this is the endosperm. So zygote is 2n in number. So this zygote finally gets converted into embryo. And from the embryo we could able to see the seed. So finally it will develop into a seed. And this seed gets germinate into something like this. Upper part is epicotyl and lower part is hypocotyl. That is the root part and this is the shoot part. And this finally gets developed into further a sporophyte. Okay. So this is what the entire life cycle of a gym. Sorry, entire life cycle of an angiosperm. So here. You should be aware where exactly meiosis occur and where exactly the mitosis occur. So here the mitosis takes place because from one functional megaspore that is actually n in number all the cells which are so formed in the embryo sac all are n only. So in order to continue the same ploidy number n it should show mitosis but before that as it is 2n in number the megaspore mother cell it should show meiosis okay. So here also the same thing mega uh, this is microspore mother cell here it is 2n in number so that's why it shows meiosis here. So that it could able to produce 4 microspore. Here out of 4 megaspore 3 regenerate. But here all the 4 microspore will survive. So therefore from 1 microspore mother cell we could able to get all functional microspore only. You may get applied level question from this part. And finally they will undergo the process of mitosis because all are any number. So remember one thing wherever we are seeing the plodi number as n always their mitosis occur not meiosis. But where there is 2n in number, if it has to produce the gamete, then must meiosis occur. Okay. So here it produces generative cell, vegetative cell and it will develop into pollen grain. It is a male gametophyte. Here embryo sac, it is a female gamete and all the rest of the things I have explained here. So here two male gamete fertilizes with one egg as well as with the uh, central cell. Therefore, it is called double fertilization. Okay. And finally, all this product and we could able to get the seed and it will get germinate and grow into a new plant. Once again, it will be able to produce a flower. This is what the entire life cycle of angels form. So, hope you understood the overview of this chapter. That is the, the entire life cycle of angels form. Thanks for watching.